Hi guys, welcome to the Dreadfx Custom Paint Beginners Classes. Guys, welcome back to part five of the Dreadfx Custom Paint Airbrush Beginners Classes. Uh, I left you off with doing lines, little bits of shading, we've done dots, so you practice that. So hopefully you've got your trigger control a bit more underway. In today's class, we're going to be painting an eye. This is basically a realistic eye. It's probably a bit way too advanced for a beginner, but what I'll do is I'll break this down. We're not going to go for an absolute render of that on here I will get that to look like that and what I'll do is I'll take you through how I'll paint it I left you off as well in part five and we were, I said about shields so you'll see me go through these and use these and I'll show you how you sharpen up lines and things like that we're going to be using the PS 270 for this it's a 0.2 so if you're using another airbrush it could be a 0.0.35 Point three, point four. You can still get this picture done with them brushes. It's not a problem. You just have to real dial your trigger in a little bit more to get your real fine lines and go a little bit closer and be real dialed in on your trigger. But you, it can be done. You could do this picture with a zero point five if you needed. If you needed to, the paints that we're going to use today, I've got my little miniatures of grayscale mixed. Now, how I did this was, I've got a grayscale viewfinder, value finder. You can buy these, I'll put a link on the description where you can get these from. And I've basically mixed some of my golden into little bottles and got these to these sort of values here. So you basically go from black and you work your way all the way around to white on the grayscale. So I've just picked a few random ones out. I've picked a value for a six, an eight, a three, and one's a dark gray mix. We'll use them. We'll use a carbon black in this. And I'm gonna use a transparent shading gray as well. So I'm just gonna go for them, just random picked. I've not gone in with a and gone picking the colours out. I'm just going to randomly go with my own preference and get this to look as close to that as I can. I'm not going for full photorealism on this uh, because the paper that I've got, the paper that I'm going to be using today is this one. It's a mixed media paper, it's an A2 and it's a 250 gram, so it's okay for pencil, paint, ink, and your charcoals, acid-free paper. These work out to about <clears throat> 22 pound a pad. And this is like the latest one that I've picked up. I couldn't find the normal one that I use, but it's very similar. We can't do scratch back techniques on this or things like that, but they're more advanced. So when it comes to real bright highlights, the little tiny ones, I'll either drop them in with a white paint pen or a white watercolor pencil. You'll just see me. But I'll talk you through this anyway. This is gonna be a really long video, guys. I wanna try and get this as quick as I can painted because this would usually take probably two to three hours and I'm not gonna be uploading a two to three hour long video. Uh, I'm gonna try and get this done quick as possible. So we'll move on, I'll set the airbrush up and I'll talk you through as I'm doing it, <clears throat> what tones I'm putting down. You'll see and I'll talk you through the different techniques, the ones that I've taught you along the way. I'll tell you which bit I'm doing. If I'm doing a certain way, I'll explain that trigger response and that the what I'm doing. So I'll see you in the next step. Right guys, hopefully that's picking that up for you. So we're working off the screen. So looking at this screen, you've got your, which would look to you there, I think would look like blacks. You've got blacks in here, so darks. 
So we're not concentrating on any of these bits at the minute. We're concentrating on these pieces, these, these bits around here, these lighter shades under here. All the little light bits will go in with first and we'll just drop a tone down on them. So I've mixed a, I've got a value eight with a couple of drops of value four. So you are looking at something like that, which is very, very hardly you can see it. So I'm just gonna start up here where it is there and basically just do a pass of color. Same here. Just drop. It's not gonna look pretty. Just basically putting it in between them lines there and just dropping that tone in on that pass along there. Same down here. What I'm gonna do down here is, I'm just gonna do some little light dot and just move the airbrush about, flicking the trigger, put in some random squiggly passes. In this bottom bit. along this bottom part of the eye. Just to give it a bottom tone there, just a little sort of base tone. A little bit in here. As I say, I'm gonna do this as fast as I can. bit of this tone in here and I'm basically just sort of speckling it in moving the brush around And I'm just looking on the picture for where all these little light pieces are and just dropping a bit of that tone. I'm not doing anything fancy with the brush, I'm basically just, you can see there, I'm just dotting the paint in. It's not going, you're just basically just spitting that paint in and getting a bit of that tone down in them areas. A bit in there, a bit there, there's a bit coming down here, a bit there, a bit there. So that's the first pass, I'm gonna clean the brush, give that a little back flush. Got the pop again, so you can just chuck that in. Blast through. Just gonna dunk a cotton pad in there and just give it a clean. Like that. Now I've just picked another random value three. So this one's going to be a little bit darker, as you will see here, that's a lot darker. So just look for that sort of colour on here. So I would probably drop a little bit. On these bits. 
and are basically just dotting and squiggling little dots moving them forward as I say I'm not going for absolute total copied image on this I'm just going to do this my way for the video but we'll get it looking as close as I'm going to try and paint this as fast as I can. I'm just following what I can see on that reference. So you've got your lines, you've got your dots. Just break them shapes down. And if you see little squiggles and weird looking patterns, just put them weird looking patterns and squiggles where you need them. As I say, just paint the shapes, get your tones as close as you can to what you see on the picture, and then just paint all them little dots and squiggles. I'm basically just got the paint down and now I'm moving, buzzing that airbrush around to get them like little weird little effects. So you can just keep your trigger down at some times with the air with the paint going and you can flip the brush around, Ag agitate the brush and it'll give you them strange weird looking patterns that you're after in the picture. I'm trying to get this down as quick as I can for you.
So I'm just doing starting this piece up here, which is this piece sort of here. So that, if you broke that down, just looked at that piece on its own, that's just a dark shape. So it's like that. And don't worry if you're going over that line because that side of the line is black. So you can sharpen that edge up as you pass back around it. Two little dots and squiggles along here. A little bit of a mottled squiggle in here. There's a little bit of a line there. Coming round, just a little bit of squiggles. And if you go in light and then you go back over it and back over it, you'll get, you'll darken it up. You'll go sort of, you won't go full opaque in one hit. You'll just mist over, go over again, go over again, and then you can just start to darken it up. And it's good, I've penciled this out, I blew this up and penciled it, quick pencil round by projecting it. And when you're looking at your piece of paper, like that piece there, you can pinpoint it by doing that. So then you can, the next piece would be there, that piece would be round here. These are these pieces, so you know you're in a band of there, of that, to drop that sort of pass. So as you can see, I'm moving the brush on the side and just creating a bit of sort of texture along here. Just doing the flick techniques. Just putting some darker shades in behind these. is going to sit in front of this squiggled line like that we've got that piece so some smaller and I'm basically just got the trigger on with very little paint coming out and I'm just flicking the brush moving the brush around to get some sort of textures that look similar to what's on the picture, going in the direction that they are.
like that. So I've not used any shields yet. I'm basically just going in squiggles, lines, dots. Buzzing around with the paint, just putting them them sort of tones where they need to go. Just hammering it down, getting it on there. <clears throat> It'll all start to change when you start putting the dark darks in. So on a piece, if you work in grayscale and you're going off a white background like we are, just going nice and light. Pick your <clears throat> if you're not doing full-on colour matching, pick your lightest tone say that one, and buzz around the picture and put that in them places that looks bright like that. So that would look similar to this here. So drop a bit in there and go around and then pick your next one along that's the next sort of tone down, say that one, and then drop that where you see that colour. Look at the picture, there's a bit there, a bit in there. And that's what I've done. I've just basically gone round and dropped them bits in roughly where they are. As I say, we're not going for full on high tone realistic. We'll flush out with the brush. And it's just having a play, guys. It's doodling, call it paint by numbers sort of thing. You penciled out your outline so you can see where the things are. That's all mapped out. And now you're just going in. Concentrate on that bit and then just drop them, flick them little bits out like I did on that pass there. They're just all little squiggles and randomness in there. I've gone round dropping bits and squiggles. So we'll grab a value. I might even go in with but I'll drop a little bit in here. As you can see, I'm just flicking around with the brush. It won't look identical to this picture as I'm doing this as quick as I can, guys. This is like speed painting for me. But we'll get it looking like an eye. You can suddenly start to change when you start dropping the darker tones and then we'll start sharpening things up.
I mean, I don't know how long I've been painting this so far. 10 minutes? I don't know. We'll try and go for a record and get it done not in half an hour. Right, so I've dropped that tone in. That's enough on that one. We can come back to that. Right, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with some Right, we've got some shading grey, so that's your shading grey. So if you kept going over it, it gets darker, darker, darker as you build the layers up. So we're gonna drop a little bit of shading grey around here. And this isn't a very, very sharp line, it's sort of a... There's sharp bits in places little line just to line that out so I know where I'm going in the moment. And we'll just start to this is just trigger full not full on but I've got some paint coming out. Just keep the paint going down. And I'm now just flicking the brush. So I'm get, getting sort of lines going back over them so they darken up. And this paint's quite thin, so it's going down mottly sort of and I don't mind that because that's giving that sort of texture when I'm looking at the reference So now I'm just doing the half moon strokes and I'm just half moon stroking and just filling this centre part of the eye in on the first pass with the shading grey. Shield to so just place it on, spray to the edge of it, and that'll just sharpen an edge up. Got some more darks down here. Tip dry, so we've got the brushes. It will clean through. And these are like little squiggles, dots. And you're basically just looking at the piece. So you've got like, when you look at that piece down here, that piece is basically that sort of shape. 
and you're just sort of painting that blodge of a, of a shape getting it as close as to it as you can and using them these are just lines first pass on these just to and it doesn't matter if you slope if you miss one as I say you've not got to get it absolutely as long as you get your your decent render of it and it sort of looks like it it's good enough guys good enough So this is just the first pass with the shaving grey. And squiggles again. Because mm. these are these are just weird parts of the skin. It's like the eye makeup under the eye. So when you blow it up, you're just seeing. weird little patterns and splodges and things like that. I mean I'm just squiggling round and then we're going to go a little bit in here and just do some get some of these hairlines just darkened over put them in place. So these are lines again keep the air on like little dagger strokes like we've done with the lines. So all these techniques I've taught you guys are going into this picture. And you're moving the brush. Backwards and forwards, just going over that line a couple of times. Beautiful. Little ones there. And we'll just bring it up. Just put a few little darks in. As you can see, two hands on the brush just steadies it that little bit more. And you can use your finger as shields like that as well. back bubble, blast through again so clean you and we're just gonna darken it out again around there Buzzing round, dropping these tones in, little squiggles. As I say, it's not got to be absolutely like you could put this over if that was trace paper and go, oh, that's perfect. You know, as long as we get a decent 
look Just going to drop a bit of that in there. Just random, quick, it's even building up, it's giving a bit of a texture, not to worry. A few little shapes, bit in there. Just a Random bit in there, just do some splodges around there, a little bit there, just get them in the middle of that, these dots. So that's the shading grey. So I've gone round, found your eight, value eight with a bit of four, and just picked a few of the tones out and randomly chucked them in. What we'll do now is we'll drop, we'll hit it with a carbon black, and now this will start to pull things together and we can start to sharpen things up and do some sharper bits. So you get your shield and if you've got like circle bits cut out you can just go in now and just And just start following where it needs to be sharp. Drop them sharps in. I'm going to darken this out. I'm not going full back on the trigger. I'm basically just got the trigger down and I'm just rocking the brush, just doing some little flicky type pattern, I'm not even moving the trigger, I've got the paint down and I'm just moving the brush with that paint consistently going, nice and light, just flicking it. Just going over that shading grey. And just dropping a darker tone, just, just darkening that up. Round on that eye. Same again, I've just got the brush down, holding it on, and I'm just darkening this out on here.
As you can see, I'm going to use the edge of the shield. Just to get that line. And we'll just do some free end bits here. eyelashes I'm just going to do randoms there because that's going into black They're just lines on with the paint off, keep the air on. It's got some not little black. Bits of makeup that are stuck to the end of the hair, so you're just doing little black dots. A little bit of darker down here. Just going to drop a few more in. There, one there, a little bit of... We'll move on to that. So I'm just going to do some lines again, just random. In here, some little wider ones coming back. And then we're just going to fill this in like that with lines. So that would be your eyebrow coming in. That's a bit dark in there. Oh, a bit too much. Just spider webbing out, but it will give you an effect on that, so don't worry about that. We're going to go a little bit darker in here, a little bit more in here. And then we need to be. So once you put a black next to your other tones and you look at your picture, you can then see you need to go darker in places or lighter.
buzz around there, give that a bit of texture. Probably a little bit darker on these. So we've got the main part in. What I'll do now is I'm going to drop the colour, come back off the, come off the black. A little clear through, and then we'll go in with the shading grey again. Give that a little buzz back. Little clear through, little blast on the. Two brushes, and then we're just going to start to drop. This is like your reflection line here, so I'm just going to sharpen that up. Get these little bits. Do some tiny little dots and just put a little bit of texture in that just to sort of match it to the picture. clean on the brush again you'll know when you paint you'll start painting and you you'll get it will start ready to start wanting to spit I'm just going to put a tone over that turn that back a bit Just here could have been a lot sharper but we're just doing this for just to give you an example guys on how you can get this down quite quick flicking just dusting the brush around just making squiggles lines shapes and you can get it to sort of look like what you're after Thank you. 
goes in round. Just going around another pass again. Just darkening these bits up, putting a bit more dark in. I don't know how we're doing for time, but I think this has gone quite quick for a sort of realistic eye. start dropping a few little highlights in, get them in place. So I'll just pan around there for you so you can see that a little bit better on that. So I'm going to go in with a paint pen and on the actual image you've got some real sharp, you've got some dots up here so you just put the dots in where you need them. There's a couple, mm, I'd probably put them about there. There's one sort of there and there, there's like one there, little mark there. And if you use a paint pen and you want to get textures with a paint pen, you can just rub it to give you that look and just change the uh, way it looks. Smudge out on that one. A little bit there, just smudge that. I'm going to call this one done, guys. It's just a quick demo for you. There's a few pencil lines still in there that you can see, but. As I say, if I was doing three to four hours on this, I would really get it dialed in. But this is just a demo for you, just to show you them techniques in a piece.
so you get a feel of what can be done in a short amount of time I mean, if I wanted to get this super sharp here, you could have masked this piece off, or you could make a stencil to go around it. But yeah, we'll call that one done, guys. So that's the eye, sort of realistic eye. I'll drop the masking off that. So I think that was quite quick. Let's put it in the paper. That's what you get when you use masking tape and it's warm, it sticks to your paper. But it was just a test. For a little class. So there's the eye guys. Went in with a value eight on the Grayscale Value Finder. I'll drop that in the link below so you can purchase one of them. So we're using the line techniques, just broad, dropping them down, went in with a light tone first and just buzzed around with a light tone and then just built it up. Go light, drop your lights in and just start to work up and work up and then put your very, very dark sort of last. You can drop your highlights in like these pieces. You can drop them in as you're going along just to keep them in place. Yeah, and just play guys. It's all practice. It really is. You've got your image next to you. If you've not got a TV monitor, print your image out and put your image next to you like that. Take your time and just enjoy it guys. Don't get, don't get stressed. Don't look at it and go, oh, I can't do it. I mean, I've just buzzed that out really quick. I mean, my eyes are hurting now, but you've seen how I've gone around that picture. I've talked you through the bits. Yeah, we could spend another hour on this and we could start really, really sharpening things up. I've got some black paint pens. So you could drop some now black paint pens over these eyelashes and that would really sharpen them up. It really would. So there's Use all the tools in your box. You've not just you've not just got to use an airbrush. An airbrush is just for getting paint down. That's all I'd say it is for. You can use your shields, your erasers, your paint pens, paint brushes. Everything that you've got that you can use, use it. Don't just think I've got to paint a picture with an airbrush and it's all got to be done with an airbrush because it's not. Make make life easier, guys, and use every tool that you've got from masking tape to a ruler even if you're using you needed that circle and it's like oh and you had to use that to spray around just use what you've got adapt everything that you've got four shapes to get it done so that's the end of part six i did get it right this time six and We'll move on in part seven. We won't progress off of this. This was just like a one-off just to show you them techniques that we've been learning, putting them in place into a picture. We'll go back to some basics again. We'll run through some more basic pieces in the next one. And then we'll do another little test piece like this. We'll pick another piece 
and then I'll go through like I have done today, talk you through, and then I'll show you where you're using, like I did today, you're using the line, you're using the dot, you're using the squiggle, and things like that. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Class number six. Uh, don't forget, if you're new to my channel, click that subscribe, press that notification button, so you can see more, so you don't miss out on any more upcoming videos of Dreadfix Custom Paint. I just want to say a big welcome to all the new subscribers that are following and dropping the comments. It's much appreciated, guys. It really is. I'll give you the feedback back. I hope you're enjoying the videos and I will see you in part seven. Don't be late. Outside will give you detention and you'll be on lines. See you in the next one, guys.